Hey everyone, uh, JB here. Um, I'm an engineer at uh, Netlify, and this is my colleague uh, Matt Kane. Hello. And uh, we're going to make a custom GPT that deploys directly to Netlify. Uh, so this is new functionality that we've released uh, this week, and basically we you can instruct uh, the GPTs that you create. Uh, to allow your users to deploy to Netlify. So any of the code, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, any static assets like images, fonts, whatever, um, that your GPT generates, you can then pipe that over to Netlify via an API call and an action. Um, and then we deploy it for your users uh, who can claim the site as their own. So we're gonna just show you right now how easy it is. Um, so yeah, so I think today what we're gonna do is we'll create, we're gonna create a, um, a GPT that is designed for lead gen. So we're going to create one that helps a user create a really engaging landing page. And the idea for this is it's a GPT that can be used by non-technical marketers, and then it, they can deploy it directly to Netlify. So they've immediately got something that they can try out. Um, and so the, we're going to use this as a way of showing how you can craft your prompt to work specifically for non-coders because a lot of these things for generating sites are designed for coders like us but we're going to do one here where we're going to see this is designed specifically for marketers and show how we can make it super easy for that yeah that's right uh so the first thing you do is you go to chat gpt and uh go to the explore tab which lands you in this page and we're just going to create a new one here we'll call it uh, lead gen GPT. And uh, we have some uh, some text here that we'll just paste in. Now, when you create your GPT, you're going to have custom instructions, right? This is the system prompt. And this is basically the business logic of how your GPT behaves. This doesn't contain any code. All of the instructions are just in natural English. And because we're creating a lead gen type of marketing site uh, we have some instructions here uh, that we've written up but basically what this does is it instructs uh, the gpt how to create a simple website so yeah so what we've what we've got in there is we've got we've got some hints in there some useful tips to help avoid the site the gpt generating um an invalid page because they're not iterating on this we and the the, the users that are creating this are not going to be somebody who knows you know what the broken script tag means or the invalid css or anything like that so we've given it a few hints in there to help it build something great straight out of the box so you can see there we've told it to use tailwind i think look i i think you need to swip, fix those those tags in there oh, you've got yeah. some um You've got some square bracket, some uh, angle brackets in there. There, yeah. so we told you to use Tailwind because you know easy. Um, font awesome as well. Um, Google Fonts and Unsplash for the images. So we've given it those hints. Oh yeah, we've got the same the same problem in the Font Awesome link too. This will help it to not hallucinate any links or anything. And you'll know that we've put in a few tips in there to try and nudge it towards not using placeholders so giving it yeah. an idea of the the fact it should be using real like optimized uh, copy or where because you know as a lot of people know it does get a bit lazy sometimes so it's useful to kind of tell it to not do that yeah and you can kind of think of it as describing your requirements as you would to a contractor who you were working with say you wanted them to build you a quick simple site you describe it like i want a, a title on the page i want a, you know a sentry car with the description on the product uh, and this is kind of how you instruct your gpt and kind of like breathe life into it um, now we don't need any web browsing or image generation here so i'm going to turn off those capabilities and here is the part where we instruct it how to communicate to Netlify. We're going to create a new action. And that opens up this pane here on the left. Uh, we have a great blog post as well as documentation uh, that we've released that tells you uh, all these steps, but I'm basically going to walk you through them now. Uh, so this is an authenticated call. 
So click on authentication and you're going to select an API key. Now uh, over in Netlify, uh, go over to your user settings page and down to applications and create a personal access token. Uh, I'm going to call this lead gen GPT token, right? Just give it a, a descriptive name so you can recognize it later. Uh, we're going to give it a no expiration date uh, because I don't want to be updating this later. And uh, it has created a token for me that I will later delete so that you can't uh, copy <laughs> this. Um, and this is the value here that you're going to go back into chat GPT or the GPT editor and paste in. And also be sure to set it as a bearer token. So this basically uh, sets the authorization header uh, for the HTTP request that uh, OpenAI will make uh, to Netlify. Yeah, and the important thing is to remember that this is not this is not used for the sites themselves. So the, your users, when they are creating a site, is not deployed to your account. So you don't need to worry about it using up all of your allowances or anything like that. That is solely used to authenticate yourself as in your app. So the users, when they generate a site, the sites belong to them. So you that's that's the important thing to always remember with this is, you know, you don't need to worry about it filling up your own Netlify account. And you don't need, you know, you don't need to have an a, account that's got loads of capacity in there or anything for it either. Great point, thanks. Yeah, that's true. Um, and now for the schema, we have a really easy way of filling this in. Uh, you just hit the import from URL button. So you can grab this URL from either our blog post or our documentation page, uh, but it's just a static JSON file. Uh, you're going to paste that URL in here and click import and boom, it populates uh, the schema. So this is how this is an open API schema uh, and it instructs the GPT on how to communicate with Netlify's API. Uh, so that's it. Those are the, the only two things you need to do in your action and everything else just works, uh, quote unquote. So yeah, the authentication piece and the schema piece is all you need. So you can hit the back button. So JB, I think you've missed an important thing here of getting it to create an amazing icon. So maybe yeah. you can go back into Bray and tell it to give something more interesting. We need a splashy avatar. So the configure tab is cool for just the old school method of pasting things into a, a standard web form. But the create tab is a super cool way of um, of actually using an LLM to fill the form out for you. It's a pretty um, neat way of how they are using GPTs to create more GPTs. Um, Eventually they're going to be taking over, aren't they? Yeah. And Matt, you had a great idea too of use the form to supply conversation starters, which are like these little buttons above the text area that kind of instructs the user um, on how they can use the GPT, right? It gives them an, it gives them examples, but also level sets expectations of what are good conversation starters I can use um, with this GPT. So yeah, this, this create tab is, it's kind of like a uh, co-pilot for configuring your custom GPT and this uh, it better be a good picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe they, oh, uh, let's skip that for now. Let's move on to, to actually trying this thing out. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Um, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to just publish to only me right now because it's uh, essentially in draft. So here we go. This is the GPT we just created. Uh, what do you want to sell Matt? Um, well, it's quite it's quite cold and damp here in England in the beginning of February, so I could really do with some cozy slippers. So shall we start shipping cozy slippers to the world? Sounds good to me. Let's see what happens. So you can see that here the GPT is gathering more information, right? And this is important because we want the resulting website to be tailored exactly how the user had in mind. Um, but for this example, if I were really using this, I'd spend time coming up with detailed answers for each of these questions. Uh, but since this is a, uh, a recording and we don't have that much time here, I'm just going to instruct it to come up with uh, random ones. So 
come up with random responses for each of uh, these bullet points. Surprise me. Uh, there is one important piece of information though, which is a URL. So uh, as this is a lead gen uh, website that we want to create, we want to redirect to a MailChimp form so we can start collecting emails. Um, we have that URL handy just as an example. Uh, so we are going to uh, paste that in here. For the URL to use as a call to action, use that so it, it, this would just be like sending a url to a colleague right we're not coding anything here we're just instructing the url uh the gpt what url we want to use in the site that the user creates Ooh, snug nice steps. Steps. that's good <laughs> nice steps. i like that they're a hug for your feet i tell you what i can really do with that right now yeah <laughs> wow join the comfort revolution <laughs> Oh my God, that's quite something. <laughs> so yeah, this is really, this is like a really cool and easy way to not just generate content, but to generate it and then deploy it, right? We, we're going the extra mile here in um, actually making the, this creation live uh, as, as soon as we hit go. So let's say, yep, sounds good to me. So here we go. You can see the action is starting here. It's generating the HTML and uh, and linking together all the assets and then sending an API request over to Netlify where we will deploy the site um, on our, our global CDN. So once it's deployed, you can send that URL to anyone you want um, and they don't need to have an account. They need don't, There's no login or anything like that. It is a live website on the internet for anyone to access. Because the nice thing about this is about how this means that you can just use Netlify as an output for whatever your GPT is. You can, you know, it's it doesn't need to be limited to coding actions. Obviously, you know, coding ones are an obvious one there, and it's you know already proven to be a really popular use case for it. But the reason I like this is that this is an example of something where it's not obviously a coding thing, but this is somewhere that you know means that whatever your GPT is. You can then put it live on the on the web. So you know, I think this is this is a really exciting new way of um, of building GPTs, and it's it's great. It's kind of this new no code um, way of building sites for people. Now, moment of truth. Let's see this. I mean, let's obviously, see how it looks. we'll see how it goes. That looks cozy. It definitely looks cozy. I don't see any <laughs> slippers in there. There's no slippers in there, but it is cozy. Good, good start. The the color scheme for the call to action could do with some work. Um, so one of the nice things about this is you can actually, obviously this is chat GPT, so you can go back and then go, uh, you know, do some yeah. iteration on it. But can... if we were building this GPT for real, we would probably then think, mm, maybe we need to change the prompt a bit to give it, you right. know, make sure that the colors are um, visible or something like that, or maybe be even more prescriptive about it. And But I think the thing about this is that you can either do this in the system prompt yourself, or, you know, obviously this is a chat. So the user can then come back and say what they think. So, you that's know, maybe that's one of the things to do there is to add into your prompt, yep. ask the user what they think of the site after it's been deployed and see if they want to change it. And that's that's obviously something else that can be done. But, you know, as it stands, aside from the small matter of missing a, CD, uh, a CTA in there, um, it's well, it's a good good landing page and not, you know, not bad for something that somebody spent two minutes on. So or not even that. Right. Well, if you look look closely, it looks like the the CTA is there as my cursor is hovering over <laughs> it. It just looks like it's white on a white background. So maybe that's something that we can instruct uh, um, to change. So, like Matt said, the as a GPT author, this is something to keep in mind to include in your system prompt of, hey, make the the call to action button have contrast. Uh, on the background color so that it's visible to the user, right? You can include these types of instructions in your prompt or as a G and or as a GPT user, you can go back and say, um, 
hey, I can't see the button, the CTA button. Can you make it maybe uh, bright purple? <laughs> <laughs> And because this is, you know, within ChatGPT, there's context, right? There's attention. It'll remember um, things that it generated in previous messages in the thread, right? So you can uh, you can refer to, yeah, previous messages by using words like this, right? Or um, can you or it, right? You can just uh, naturally using natural language kind of refer to the creation you just made and tweak it. Um, so what this is doing right now is basically taking our feedback and mixing it with what it previously generated uh, to come up with something that hopefully is a little more with what we had in mind. I bet the, uh, the, the image might be different, but let's see what the updated page looks like here. Okay. Oh, you know, I like this a little bit. It's really cozy. <laughs> So this is now bright purple, just as we said, and uh, we're gonna click on it and boom, here we are into our uh, custom MailChimp signup form. So uh, we just deployed a website on the inter internet without needing to know any code. Um, I can take this URL here and share it uh, with, with anyone I please. Um, there's one more important thing to note is that there are two URLs that come back in this message. One is the URL to the production website uh, our, our snug steps, uh, cozy slippers here. And, and the other URL is uh, a link to claim the site. So by default, sites will expire in one hour. And this is an important anti-spam measure uh, th that we have to ensure the high quality of the content on our platform. Um, but basically we make it really use easy for your end users to claim the site. All they have to do is click on the claim site link and they'll be taken to Netlify where you can uh, claim the site. You don't already need, to, your end users don't already need to have a Netlify account. If they aren't signed in, this button will say like sign up now or something like that. But basically what you do is you click this button and you're dropped into uh, what we call the site overview page, which uh, essentially associates sites to users and teams. Um, so once they click that button, the site is long lived. It will never go away. It's part of our um, immutable and atomic deploys, which you can learn about uh, all on our documentation. And of course, at that point, you can give it a give it a name if you're not into cheerful biscotti. Though I have to say that's a pretty cozy name already. But um, you can do all the changes in there. You can put in a um, custom domain. You can download the the generated uh, site as well and edit it. Um, so yeah, there we go. Snug steps. Next step, the world. Right. <laughs> Get cozy with snug steps. <laughs> Look how cozy that is. Incredible. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And, um, yeah, we can't see what, uh, we can't wait to see what you create. All right. Bye.